You bought scripts, you've bought group nine. Why is bigger better? Well, we really don't see bigger better, but we, we do see the way people are consuming content is changing and the type of content people are consuming are changing. So the reason that we did scripts is that they have great quality brands and they own all of their content. So we see it really as uh, we're acquiring 200,000 hours of IP and great brands that have really saturated the U.S. in a great way, HGTV and food and travel and, and cooking and DIY. But it really hasn't proliferated around the world. We launched some food and home channels around the world mm -hmm. and we're very successful. So we think with their brands and library, we could take it around the world. But more importantly, you know, as people start to consume content on all devices, you know, we can take a lot of that content and the content that we own. We're the largest uh, IP mm -hmm. media company in the world. We have more global brands than anyone else. So Discovery, Animal Planet, TLC, mm -hmm. OWN, Science. If we close on scripts, mm -hmm. food, HGTV, travel. Those we can provide everywhere in the world on every device because mm -hmm. we own everything on it. And so, you know, we see a, a, a an ecosystem that's in some kind of moderating uh, growth in some markets and some decline in others, but relatively healthy, mid-single digit versus uh, double digit or, or mid-teens several years ago. But now we have a load of IP we could take direct to consumers on their phones. You know, ultimately, if you're interested in Italian cooking or cooking mm -hmm. or food, or if you love discovery or science, mm -hmm. we can deliver it right to you on your phone because we own all the content. When it comes to Group 9, are you seeing traction with a younger more millennial audience there? So we're seeing huge traction in terms of the scale of, of consumption of, our, yeah. of, of the content on Group 9. Uh, it's over 6 billion uh, views a month. Uh, we're the largest provider of short form news on Facebook. You know, so those uh, that would see now this, uh, that's us. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and it's growing rapidly. It's not making money yet, but we are one of the largest providers on Facebook which usually one or two minute uh, stories. Uh, we're also the largest, uh, uh, one of the largest providers on Snap. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's an, an almost full millennial audience. And so we have our traditional business where we're taking content around the world an hour, a half hour, mostly on channels. We'll now be able to take that direct to consumer either in bundles or individually. Uh, but we have this short form studio effectively with Group 9 where we're the number one or two or three player in the world in terms of short form content and it was helpful to us even as Facebook was looking to build mid form content series that are four five or six minutes we were able to get a lot of those series because we're already a top provider to Facebook the okay. challenge is it's it's not making money yet right so we have huge scale and we have great name recognition and and brand awareness but now we have to take it. And we're working with Facebook, we're working with Snap on how we really monetize that. So speaking about the need to make money, there's been speculation about job cuts coming with the Scripps acquisition. How many jobs? I mean, what kind of efficiencies are you working through? Well, we really look at it as two things. Uh, yes, there's going to be significant synergies. I mean, we've stated about 350 million. We think there could be more than that. But it's really, the idea is we have two great companies that do quality content. When we put them together in the U.S. alone, we'll have more than 20% of viewership on cable. Uh, and we have, you know, five of this of the top six or seven women's networks with ID and OWN and TLC and HGTV and food. But we're then going to invest a lot more in content and going direct to consumer. So we really view the company as, if we can, if we close on this acquisition or when we do, as being kind of a breaking it in half. Mm -hmm. The right side is growth, mm -hmm. and that's owning more IP, providing that content in different ways on different devices in all languages all around the world, and getting more viewership, more scale, uh, more more people spending more time with us. How the many? left side is cost, and we have to attack that. And we think that we can do, we could really do a good job of attacking that. And we would have needed to do that even if right. we didn't do scripts, because the industry is changing. And do you see doing more deals? Will, will you be doing more M&A? Sure. I mean, I think, you know, we've said that we think scripts is a very good deal for us, mm -hmm. but one of the big attractions is we pick up more IP, mm -hmm. more quality brands, but 18 months after we close, we'll be less than three and a half times levered, and then we'll be you know, a $35 billion company with a bigger balance sheet so we can go out and buy more of the stuff that we're going to need so that we can be more successful in the future. Speaking of sports, we've seen Amazon and Facebook non-traditional players pay up for sports rights. Right. What, what's next that they could get? 
Well, look, they're in the marketplace, and uh, we're actually working with both of them. Mm -hmm. Amazon, in particular, we're doing a lot of work with. Uh -huh. We have a direct-to-consumer product already. We've been at it for about a year and a half, almost two years, in Europe. We're the leader in sports in Europe with Eurosport, where we have the traditional ESPN-type business, where we have Eurosport has three sports channels in every country uh, in, in Europe. But our model in Europe is a little bit different than the sports models in, in, in most other countries around the world. It, one, we're, we, we have a dominant position on linear, where we're the only pan-European player. But all the sports that we've acquired, the Olympics through 2024, tennis, cycling, uh, handball, football in a number of markets. We own all that IP for all platforms. And so most sports platforms buy the rights just for linear or the cable channel. So if you go to Europe in a year and, and Vodafone or Deutsche Telekom or BT are selling rights to see the French Open or to see the Olympics or to see Tour de France, they're buying it from us. Mm -hmm. And so we're way long on sports IP. We have Eurosport that's profitable, but mm -hmm. we think over the next couple of years, we'll be able to sell to the super fans of tennis and cycling and the Olympics and Olympic sports, and we'll be able to go direct to consumer in a much more scalable fashion. We're already getting some real traction. How many sports free direct to consumer TV packages will there be by the end of the year? Um, in Europe right now, in most markets, it's just us. Yep. There are a couple of the bigger markets like Germany uh, and the UK where there are more. But in most markets right now, it's just us and we got a great jump on it. I think that more and more, when if, if somebody loves squash, we have all the squash. <laughs> if somebody loves a, a speed skating or tennis, mm. you know, that will be, I think, a very attractive model because people, mm. the way you would buy a magazine if you love golf or tennis or cycling, you know, across Europe, 750 million people, all the people that love a particular sport will be able to buy that from us and yeah. get all of it.